Hello friends in this video we will be covering some essential and basic concepts that every civil engineer should know so let us get started standard penetration test that is spt the spt is a test used to check how strong the soil is and if it might be a problem during an earthquake in this test a tool is pushed into the ground using a hammer the number of times the hammer hits the tool to push it 30 cm into the ground is counted this number is called the n value and it tells us how strong or soft the soil is here is why this test is important number 1 soil strength the spt help us find out if the ground can hold the weight of a building the n value tells us how firm or soft the soil is which helps engineers design strong foundations earthquake risk the test is also used in areas with earthquakes to see if the soil might get soft and lose strength during shaking if the soil is weak it can cause damage number 3 type of soil the spt helps engineers know what kind of soil is under the ground like sand clay or gravel this helps them decide what kind of foundation is needed in short the spt helps engineers understand the soil better so they can build safe and strong buildings test for aggregates from these tests we can check the quality and suitability of aggregates for construction purposes Number 1 sieve analysis This test is used to determine the particle size distribution of aggregates It helps ensure that the particles are the correct size for the specific concrete mix Number 2 specific gravity This test measures the density of the aggregate material compared to the density of water Specific gravity helps in understanding the compactness and weight of the aggregate which is important for mix calculations and quality control number 3 water absorption this test determines how much water the aggregate can absorb it helps assess the porosity of the material excessive water absorption may affect the concrete mix and reduce its strength number 4 impact value test this test measures the toughness or resistance to sudden impact of the aggregate it is important for aggregates used in road construction where impact resistance is critical these tests help ensure that aggregates are suitable for making durable and strong concrete which is vital for construction safety and performance types of beams number 1 simply supported beam This beam is supported at both ends. It can freely rotate at the supports, but it cannot move up or down. Example: a beam placed across two walls. Cantilever beam. One end of the beam is fixed and the other end is free. It looks like a shelf that is attached at one end but has no support at the other end. Example: a balcony that is fixed to a building at one end but has no support on the other side number 3 continuous beam this beam is supported at more than two points it spans over multiple supports providing more stability example a bridge that rests on multiple supports or piers number 4 fixed beam both ends of the beam are fixed and cannot rotate this makes it more stable and stronger example a beam fixed in place like the one shown in a picture that cannot move at the ends each type of beam is used for different kinds of buildings and structures depending on how much weight they need to carry and how stable they need to be types of columns some common columns include tied spiral and composite columns number 1 tied column a tied column is made by using vertical bars that is reinforcement held together 
by horizontal ties or hoops. It is the most common type of column used in buildings. Example, a concrete column in a building with steel bars inside held together by steel ties. Number 2. Spiral Column In a spiral column, the vertical reinforcement bars are wound in a spiral shape around the column. This type of column is stronger because the spiral design helps distribute the load evenly. Example, a round column in a building where the steel bars are wound in a spiral around the concrete. Number 3. Composite Column a composite column is made by combining two or more materials such as concrete and steel to work together to carry loads. This combination makes the column stronger and more durable. Example, a column made from steel encased in concrete used in high-rise buildings for extra strength. Each type of column is used depending on the type of building, the loads it needs to carry and how much strength and durability are required. Plinth level The plinth level is the portion of a building that is located just above the ground and below the finished floor level. The plinth is usually made of concrete or masonry and serves to support the walls and floors above. It helps prevent water from entering the building and protects the structure from ground moisture. Dampproof cores, that is DPC. A DPC is a horizontal layer of waterproofing material such as bitumen, cement or plastic that is placed in the walls or foundations of a building. Its purpose is to prevent moisture from rising up from the ground into the walls or floors of the building. Why it is important? Moisture can cause damage to the building leading to issues like mold rotting or weakening of the structure. The DPC helps to stop this moisture from seeping into the building, ensuring that the interior remains dry and safe. It is usually installed at the base of the walls just above the ground level or in the foundation. Standard Size of a Septic Tank A septic tank is a big container that is buried in the ground to hold dirty water and waste from your home, like from toilets and sinks. It helps clean the water before it goes into the ground. The size of the septic tank depends on how many people live in the house. For a house with 4 to 6 people, the tank should be able to hold about 4500 to 6000 liters of water, which is about 1000 to 1300 gallons. The septic tank stores the waste and helps separate the dirty stuff from the clean water. The clean water then slowly goes into the ground. Risers and trades in stairs When building stairs, two important parts help you step safely. Number 1. Risers This is the vertical part of each step. The height you need to lift your foot to move to the next step. The recommended height for a riser is 150 mm to 200 mm, which is about 6 to 8 inches. This makes it easy to walk up the stairs without feeling too steep. Number 2. Treads This is the horizontal part of each step, where you place your foot when stepping up or down. The recommended width for a tread is 250 mm to 300 mm, which is about 10 to 12 inches. This provides enough space for your foot to comfortably land on the step. These measurements are designed to make stairs comfortable, safe and easy to use for everyone. So friends, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.